coaches and athletes in any sport, they have a very close relationship. And it's the same for sure in cross country. They talk about their skis, how they're feeling, tactics for the race course. But we want to get in a little deeper and find out about the best or worst advice a coach or athlete has given in their career. Yeah, one time we were in uh, Germany in the Black Forest and uh, our normal venue didn't have enough snow so they took us to the top of an uh, alpine mountain for the race and we had to take the T-bar up to the top. And so after the race I was following my coach down through the fog and uh, all of a sudden the run started to get really steep and I was on my clister skis so it was getting pretty sketchy. And then soon I was completely out of the snow and we had definitely started in snow at the parking lot. Uh, so I took off my skis and I walked down and I ended up on the complete other side of the mountain and had to hitchhike back to the coaches. And I guess at the coaches meeting that night, um, they said, oh, the silly Americans, they went down the World Cup downhill run. <laughs> yeah, I've had uh, I mean, my worst advice when I was playing, uh, playing rugby and I got a ta bad tackle and ended up breaking my ankle and I was lying on the floor screaming about my ankle and how bad it was. And the coach come running onto the pitch and he said, first thing he said to me, yeah, can you walk it off? Can you still play? I ended up being on crutches for six weeks and with a big plastic guy, so I, I don't think I could walk it off. And it was the start of your cross-country career after that? Yeah, well, that's when I decided maybe if I want to take skiing and running and stuff to your session, maybe stop playing rugby. <laughs> so that was the end of my rugby career. I think I have to be at the national, junior nationals in Sweden, like, oh, it's over 10 years ago. But I was skiing and uh, I tried skis and I was really cold. It was up in Yellowbar, so it was really cold and it was compact snow so it didn't go so smooth and easy and uh, actually I had the uh, vaccine chief in Sweden Urban Nilsson was testing skis with me and I said oh this is not going good this is not going good and he said oh if this skis not work then you can punch me when you get into the finish <laughs> and I was winning that race so he had right yeah no no really awesome advice really comes to mind um, <laughs> at the moment um, there's been many instances of bad advice I think to the athletes um, some of the most memorable have to do with uh, men's sprinting and whether to double pull a race versus to use grip wax. And I've been wrong on that call many times, kind of in the last seconds before an athlete needs to choose skis and they go out on the course. And typically it's me saying something like, there's no way that guys are going to double pull this course today. <laughs> And then, of course, they do, and our guys on classic skis get, get worked over pretty good. So that, that's what immediately comes to mind. I learned uh, early that uh, to become a good cross-country skier, you have to, to master a lot of things. And then and there's nothing that defines actually what you have to train. You can, you can do a lot of things in a lot of sports. So I've done a lot of sports in my youth. and. Uh, and uh, I think that helped me become uh, a good skier. Yeah, I can remember Junior World Championships some years ago, then we get the advisor yeah, that we should try double pooling. And uh, yeah, to trying that was maybe not the best part. Everyone who knows me, I'm not the best double pooler and not that strong in my arms. So uh, yeah, it was a short, <laughs> a short experience with, uh, with not the good end, yeah. <laughs>